Hey, welcome back. Good to see you again. Thanks for joining the channel. Hope you're all well. Today on the bench I have an ad stereo receiver. It's a 7225 PE power envelope. And uh, this was brought to me by a client. He wants me to uh, go over it, do a full full service, and bring it back. Um, I, I believe it is working. He, It was his daughter's, and I guess it fell out of use, and it wasn't being used. In, so he took it back from her, and he's going to repurpose it for another for something else and he wants it all gone over and uh, I agreed these NADs they're so I don't know you guys are some of you guys are NAD fans it's so uninspiring this this layout but apparently these uh, NADs sound great well they do I've heard quite a few of them that sound great but um, really not inspired by the design of the front panel and the entire package actually it's kind of a blah gray anyways uh, I, I assume it works uh, let's see I have plugged in speakers so let's put some power to it and let's try it out I have uh, Balance, working, both channels is there. What, oh, mono, okay. AM. We got nothing on AM. The reason is that a lot of manufacturers stop putting bar antennas on their gear and they put an AM input, but whoever hooks up a long wire antenna to one of these uh, it pretty much kills the AM reception without that bar antenna, so that's kind of disappointing. But it is working and it's tuning. Phono. Fairly quiet, a little bit of hiss, not bad. No hum. We'll go through that. We'll go through everything on this. So it's probably a pretty good performer even before I start. And a little bleed through on the CD selection from the tuner. Same with the video. All right. So we know it works. Everything's fine. Um, let's have a look inside. Okay, so I got the screws out, pull the cover off, and we already see a problem here. This is a smoke stain. Smoke stain from some event that happened. Okay. It's a pretty compact design. It's got a special transformer that's wound to be low profile and wide it's kind of a unique design for a transformer it's got three TO3 output devices and from what it looks like right here we don't have matched pairs uh, so these two were replaced sometime in the past and uh, I can also see this transistor was replaced and I can see a big black mark here on the PCB board. I don't know if you can see that. The fin's in the way. I'll turn it. Maybe you can see it too. I don't know. So it looks like we suffered some trauma one day on this uh, channel here on this side. So we'll have to go through and make sure everything's correct there. And um, aside from that, it just looks like it's going to get you know with a full service I do full recap and there's not that many caps on this thing so it shouldn't be too bad and that is known for using garbage caps on these boards and uh, they used I think they just used the absolute minimum just to get it out the door because it was working it sounds good I think that was what they were counting on is uh, just to uh, get it out the door and get it to sound good. 
So yeah, we'll replace a lot of these caps. And we'll check over these boards. I do believe, yeah, it has a removable bottom. So that's good. Uh, so I'll get busy on that. Here's the bottom. And there's a sticker. I hope you can read that. It's kind of hard to get the camera to, but it's... Uh, who did the previous servicing? And we have just a dusty bottom. That's just no big deal. And here's our bottom printed circuit board. Everything's accessible. So here's where the trauma happened before, and we got some burnt, burnt traces here. Let me show you. Looks like it's been fixed. It's all right. Let's have a look. So this trace here is all carbon burnt. This one goes to this transistor and a few other parts. The problem with this is once you scorch and burn a printed circuit board like this, it can become conductive because it turns into carbon, right? But we'll see how that holds up. We'll check that out. Other than that, everything looks okay. I can see some cracked solders right here. One, two, two crack solders there. And there's crack solders on some of these function switches as well. I can see that right from here. And typically the uh, RCA jacks on the back, they crack as well. But it looks like somebody soldered those up in the past. So that's all right. But we still have a problem here. And uh, I think that's where those two heat sinks were. Got another crack here on this transistor. Yeah, like I said, a lot of cracks on these switches. This switch here is CD, and it's got one, two cracks. But we'll address all that. Okay, so I think the first step the first step is just get some, start getting some new caps in this thing. I'll remove the tuner. Move the tuner out of the way and I'll inspect what's under here because I can't see anything right now. And then we'll start re recapping. And uh, also, another thing I should notice I did previously blow all the dust out of this because it was really pretty dirty, pretty grimy. So I took an air compressor and blew all the dust out. It looks a lot better now, but it didn't look so good before. So uh, it's still dirty, but we'll clean that up too. You still see there's dirt and stuff on the heatsink. We'll go through all that and get it clean. Okay, so yesterday I finished recapping, and yes, it did need it. This, these caps that NAS use are garbage. They use the absolute bottom garbage that they can find for that time. They have about four or five different brands and different, these ones are called, what are these called? Elecom? I don't know. These ones are Elite. Yeah, very, very nice name for a capacitor. Elite, and what is this? Alicon again. But they're all garbage. They're all, a uh, high percentage of these have failed. And what I mean by failed is they don't even meet 75% of their tolerance rating. And they have high ESR, and I'm talking like five to eight times what it should be. So they're all cooked. They're all 85 degree, of course, because NAD just gets the cheapest ones they can get their hands on. Some of them actually aren't too bad, like this one here tested out fine at 2000 microfarad. But I changed it anyway, why not? You know, it's it's a garbage capacitor. And, uh, yeah, so that's good that's done. Also shocking is the uh, quality of the soldering on this thing. It's, it's just a, a disgrace. Um, I think part of the problem is they have holes punched in the PCB board I think they're oversized so when they put when they when they the, imagine this board flipped over and they load the board with all the components and then I think it goes under a machine that slices all the leads to the same length so that they're all short and then it goes into the wave soldering machine but from what I can see we have some oversized holes and the part doesn't sit directly in 
on the board it's straight it flops over to one side or the other because the holes are so big and then they wave solder it and then the parts aren't uh, aren't uh, properly through the hole and uh, you know there's a lot of garbage joints on here like a lot of them are cracked cracking is of course from the heat and uh, is when you wave solder and you don't have enough solder on the joint and it comes back and it's really scarce on the solder then you have a weak joint right then you get thermal cycling thermal cycling will crack a joint in no time uh, it's just from the expansion and contraction of different materials uh, puts a little stress on that joint and it cracks right away that's how it happens see this one here is really cracked I can see that from here and there's a few other ones so I'm gonna go spend some time. I'm going to rework this whole board. I'm going to remove these wires and clean all this. And uh, yeah, I got the pots ready to take out. They're all desoldered and the switch banks are all desoldered and ready to take out. So I'm going to take those out, clean those. I still have to cut all these little wires. I have them all sticking up. You can't see them, but they're little wires everywhere stick from the capacitors. I'll cut all those off, clean it, and uh, I'm going to have to reflow this board because this looks terrible. Plus a lot of this I can't even see. It's all blobbed with uh, rosin flux and stuff and, and uh, you really can't inspect it when you got all that crap on there. So that's where I'm at now. Uh, probably spend today working this board and uh, cleaning switches and pots. Okay, let's turn our attention to this power amplifier here. I was doing a little bit of looking at this. I took a cotton swab and I did a little bit of cleaning and the board cleaned up pretty nice actually. So what I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna remove some parts here and finish the cleaning, get the board clean. I don't like it when it's black stained like that. Um, another thing I noticed is somebody put, what looks like a little ceramic capacitor here. This is 100 nanofarad. Um, this should actually really be a film cap like the other channel. Let's see the other channel here has, you can, I don't know if you can see it, it's right here on the edge. You can see this uh, green cap here up in the corner. That's what it should be, is a film cap. And, uh, you know, that's like a little MLCC or something. And another thing that concerns, concerns me is this pot, the trim pot. It's probably damaged with all the smoke that got released in this area. This I think this resistor beside it just blew up. So that's where the board is all cooked underneath. So I'm probably going to replace this trim pot. It looks like somebody might have done it already, but I'm looking at it and it's all covered with black soot on this side. You can see where it took some heat. It's 100 ohm uh, and it looks different than the other ones. Or maybe just somebody just took the top off. I don't know. Maybe it's the same. But it looks different from that one. So yeah, I'm going to remove some components here and clean up this board. Uh, another thing I want to check out is these circuit breakers. So these are the only protection this uh, has for your speakers. Now I'm going to pull these two circuit breakers out and I'm going to check contact resistance on those, make sure that they're good. If they're not good, we're going to have to either open them up and clean them or you have to think of something else. So, uh, I'll have a look at that as well, but first I'm going to get rid of some of these parts in the way and clean up this board. Alright, so here's a look at the circuit breakers. Here's one. This is the uh, one from the good channel, the channel that hasn't blown up. And it shows 21 milliohms, 21 and a half milliohms. That's good. So that, that's got some good contacts on it. Here's the other one from the smoke channel. And it has 22 so they're both good so they're gonna go back in no worries there okay so I'm liking what I'm seeing here and damage is mostly concentrated around this one resistor it must have just went up in flames but uh, everything else looks pretty good you got to be really careful with these uh, phenolic boards because when they get burnt like this and toasty they can become conductive and they can start um, leaking leaking current and uh, I did test, let me, let me see, it's not bad. A little bit of a stain by this transistor too. I wonder if this transistor kind of was part of the problem. Q, Q408. 
Let me flip the thing over and I'll show you something. So, yeah, I got an ohmmeter. This is probably not probably not the best way to do this, but I'm going to do it anyways. We got the ohmmeter and we can test between this trace the resistor burnt resistors right here and this is all charred here. So we'll put that there and then we'll test here. And we got open circuit. That's 100 ohms because of this. Uh, I think So we've got some mega ohms here. That is Yeah, that should be that should be zero. Now it's zero. Maybe I was just reading a cap. But uh, yeah, you don't want any leakage between these traces. It's in a power amplifier, so a few nanoamps ain't going to hurt anything. But when you start getting up into the microamp range, um, it's going to start throwing things off and uh, causing havoc in the biasing. And but I'm not seeing anything here anymore. Let's see. Yeah, okay, we check that. This one and this one. Okay, so I'm going to call that good. I'm going to clean this up, put those parts back in, and we'll uh, finish up this amplifier, and then we can move on to doing some testing. And one more thing, I did pull out these two main filter caps. They're 6800 microfarad at 50 volts, and I, they test out at 6000 microfarads, which isn't too bad, and they have a good ESR. They got a good weight. Um, I'm going to reserve my judgment on these until after we do our power tests and we're going to see how it uh, holds up at full power. If these show any weaknesses, they're going to get replaced. But if they hold up well, they're going to go back in and stay in. Well, they are going to go back in, but uh, we're going to use them. This is just a 25 watt amplifier, 25 per channel amplifier. So this time I'm just going to go with uh, how they perform. Okay, on to amplifier adjustments. So, Mad wants us, it says, before adjusting, remove input signal and load. And set the speaker impedance switch to 8 ohms. Okay, so speaker impedance switch is down here, and it's set for 8 ohms right now. Okay. Uh, and then it wants me to use a dim bulb tester on the mains for initial turn on, but I'm just going to use my meter. Pretty confident this can you see this meter? Okay, I'm gonna turn it on and we'll see how it climbs up. Climbs up to about 30 watts, settles around 20. So we know we don't have any faults, it's not drawing excessive current, 20 watts, which is pretty normal for an amplifier this size. Alright, let's turn that off. So let's do the first adjustment is uh, the zero zero balance on the outputs. So we connect a, a multimeter across left and right channel outputs and turn it on, adjust R411 and R412 for reading of zero volts, plus minus 30 millivolts. So let's do that. All right, I think I, hope I got everything in frame here. Now we're gonna be working on this when it's live. So of course, we're gonna to have to look at where our hazards are. So everything here on this side is 120 volts. This switch, uh, and this, these are courtesy outlets here. This thing here is, I think, fusing. There's a fuse back here, I believe. I'm not sure. But it's all covered. It's pretty difficult to get electrocuted unless you actually stick your fingers in here, which you're not intentionally going to do. So just be aware where the hazards are. Okay, let's turn this on. And let's, uh, what am I connected to now? I'm connected to the left channel. So let's see what the left channel comes out at. Left channel is, I don't know which one the left channel is. We're going to find out here soon enough though. Just waiting for it to stabilize. Getting close to zero. They don't even mention on the service manual which potentiometer does which channel. It's 
it's kind of kind of sad. It says center voltage adjust, center voltage adjust, but it doesn't say which channel it is. Okay, we're down around zero, one, floating around one or two. So let's try this channel. Oh yeah, that's the one. Okay, so let's get this zeroed out. It are, are pretty close already. Let's take it down. Too far. I'll take it back up a little bit. Going counterclockwise right now. Very slowly. The pot's not jumping around, so it's I'm pretty happy about that. It doesn't I don't think it needs a cleaning. It's just really sensitive. Okay. Well, 2.6. Good. We'll get we'll get better than that. We'll get down. Turn it clockwise. How close can you get it? It's probably right about where we started. Really didn't need adjusting, but for the sake of the video, okay, I'm gonna leave it. Oh, why does it do that? Okay, there we go. All right, let's change it to the other channel. And I'm doing it on the speaker terminals. There's no relay. There's no. Uh, switch. Okay, this one's pretty good too. Let's see if we can do this. I have to go counterclockwise to drop it. Oops. Bring it back up. Going clockwise again. Right there. Okay, we're gonna leave that alone. That was pretty good actually. It's he's balanced up all right, so it's a good sign. It's a healthy amplifier. And uh, let's go on to the idle adjustments, which is really confusing. Okay, this is very different from your typical amplifier. I don't know if you noticed on this, but if you look here in the output devices, there's no emitter resistors. There's none. And you know, I kind of yeah, I was looking at the circuit. There's no emitter resistors in this thing. I don't know how they're getting away with it. They're, they got their uh, minus 41 volts here, plus 41 volts here. Uh, they got two resistors, or tra sorry, transistors. And they're doing all the business without the emitter resistors. Now, they do have a 1 ohm resistor here in series with the, this collector. And uh, they have two test points on it. But if you go look on the underside of the board, there's a blob of solder that jumps this out, so it's zero ohms right now. And if I remove the uh, solder blob, it'll open up this one ohm resistor, and we can take our measurements across the one ohm resistor. And I think we are looking for, what are we looking for here? Uh, 28 millivolts, plus or minus two millivolts across that one ohm resistor. So, you can do that as well. Let's do that now. We have to flip this over and open up solder bridges. I'll shut it off first. Here's our points right here and right here. Um, here's our two test points right here. Okay. And here's our one ohm resistor. And this is the solder blob we've got to remove to open those two up. Let me heat this joint up and... Oops. Okay, that's open. And our other one is under this wire. It's 
kind of a really weird way of doing things. Okay, that's open. Let's check they're open with our ohm meter. Check this one, it should be one ohm. No, it's still shorted. Okay, there we go. And this one should be open, one ohm. Okay, good. Okay, my probes are hooked up to the two uh, test points. You turn this thing on. Our power climbed up to 20 watts again. Everything's good. We have about 10 millivolts here. No, that's one millivolt. My mistake. So we need to turn this thing up. Actually, I'm going to let it sit and warm up for a few minutes first. Let's see here. They don't tell us that, but. Easily uh, five minutes, five minutes, and then readjust. Okay, well we'll adjust it, and then we'll adjust it again in five minutes. So let's do this now. Got a ten turn trip, ten turn trim pot on here, so it's. We need twenty eight. Twenty eight millivolts. That's a lot. We'll keep turning it up. getting up there 23 uh, 28 26 27.4 I'll turn it down a little bit now that I cranked up the current it's gonna start heating heating the heat sink up and things are gonna start drifting so I'll just take it down looks like we might got too much here Okay, we'll let it do its thing while it's we're doing the other channel. So let me carefully connect this to the other channel. All right, and this one's low too. Let's turn this one up. This thing probably sounded like crap with it. Counterclockwise turns it up. Okay. I know so current consumption is turn coming up. I don't know if you can see that in the top of your screen there. We're at 25 watts now. And we got 27 millivolts here. So I'm gonna let that let that settle five minutes and then I'm gonna readjust both channels. Okay, so five minutes has passed. This one's staying stable, it's not drifting anymore, so it's probably come up to temperature. I can't even, well, it's barely warm. So, and if you look at our consumption, we're at 25 watts now. So, since I turned up both amplifiers, this amplifier is, both amplifiers consuming five more watts than it was previous, which will make it a little warm. But 25 watts for a receiver this size is, is really nothing. It's not going to get that hot. Shouldn't anyway, especially with good ventilation. I can go back and check this one again. So we're a little bit high on this channel. Turn it down a little bit. Turn this one down to 27 as well. I'm on the wrong way. Counterclockwise takes it down. Okay, there's 27. I'm right, gonna leave that at that. Leave that alone, and we're done. No, we're not done. One more thing to do. We have to close up these connections again. So final step, close up these connections, power's off. I'm gonna solder this one closed. I'll solder this one closed. And 
and it's ready. All right, so we're all wired in for a power test. I have a thousand hertz tone. Uh, signal I use 355 millivolts RMS. Uh, let's see here. I got a power meter, and you should be able to see the scope on the channel on the screen. So let's turn it on. We got it turned down. As we do, let's turn it on. It jumps up to 36 watts and goes settles back down around 21. And there's no relays to wait for. Everything's live right now, so let's try turning this up. And adjust my scope better. Okay, going up. Oh, we're already at clipping. That's terrible. Let's turn this down a bit. I'm going to turn my probes down, maybe. Set to 10 times. Okay, let's try this again. Here's our clipping. And let's get both traces on the screen. So what are we, let's see, let's get a, a good reading on our left channel. That's the one we're measuring. Okay, so let's set the left channel up. Right there, I believe, the top trace. And we have 17.54 volts RMS on the output. Consuming 167.9 watts here. Now the right channel's clipping a little bit. It might just be an imbalance. A little imbalance in the pot, maybe. Turn it down a bit. Now you can see the power supply is fluttering. So it's, it is struggling a little bit. But if I go down a bit... Yeah, we are... So I'll let this go for a while. It's going to warm up quite a bit. We'll see how this does. Okay, we're at about the five minute mark here, full power. This heat sink's getting quite warm. I'm going to shut it down. Uh, I think a lot of the heat sinking in this is not really adequate. It's just a, shin, a thin, uh, what is it, probably about a two millimeter thick piece of aluminum sheet that's folded, punched and folded, and uh, there's really not that much ability to carry heat away from the devices. It's pretty thin, and these uh, transistors are getting quite hot. So I'm going to leave it at that. Let's check a few other things. Let's check square wave. Kind of interested in how this thing will do. So let's go to square waves. Let's increase our okay. So there it is with the tone controls flat. Base cut, base boost. Here's treble cut and treble boost. Not too bad. A little bit of a ring there on the, the start of the... So if I flatten this out with these tone controls, a nice square wave. Let's go up in frequency. Okay. Five kilohertz. It's actually doing pretty good. That's five kilohertz, not too bad. Ten kilohertz. 
starting to see the rise and fall times quite a bit. Twenty kilohertz, pretty much a sine wave now. So it's fairly good, fairly good response. The uh, the rise and fall doesn't change at all with the with the frequency. As you can see, it stays pretty same. That's inherent into the amplifier itself. It's pretty good. I'm gonna leave it at that. All right, so it passed the power test flying colors. Actually, it, did, it really impressed me. Uh, we almost got 40 watts out of a channel here. This is a 25 watt per channel amplifier, and it's doing pretty good. So I think I might leave these capacitors alone. They were holding up. Uh, you can see a little bit of ripple, but I don't think that's uh, for, for the power we're getting out of this. I think we're doing pretty good with these caps. I'm just gonna leave it alone. One thing I am gonna do though is get rid of these garbage caps in this tuner. What do I got here? Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. About twenty caps here, and they have a big elite six point three volt forty seven hundred. I think they're using this as a super cap. Probably end up leaving that alone if it's still good. It's working just for the memory backup on the on the processor There's a controller chip. So I'm going to replace these other twenty caps, and we're going to call this done. Well, there it is. It's done. Uh, I got it all back together. Uh, I put it all back together last night and finished it up, cleaned it, and then this morning I was going to shoot the uh, the outro video for this this uh, this episode, and I discovered there's a couple faults <laughs> I didn't even know. One of them is I had a solder bridge across his center tune LED, and that in turn caused a uh, little bit of overdraw on the power supply and I smelt a hot burning smell coming from the back of the unit so I pulled out um, pulled the cover off to check this there's a 56 ohm resistor on there checked with my voltmeter and it had 10 and a half volts across it and I did the math that was two watts of dissipation on a one watt resistor so I didn't I knew something was wrong there so I uh, checked a few spots on the power on the sorry the tuner and there was one spot back here that was heating up and I couldn't figure out what was going on. Plus the center tune light wasn't coming on when I was turning, tuning through the band. So I had a good look with the magnifying lens and sure enough there was a short across this LED which in turn caused the uh, power supply to have an overcurrent condition. It was still working and it was still picking up stereo stations but it would not lock on a station when it was searching and uh, it's because the center tune was messed up. That was one fault. I had another fault on the phono stage. I had DC on the pot. When you turned up the pot, you could hear DC. And that was another solder bridge of my fault. So I fixed up both of those. And we are happy, happy, happy. Now, it's not the greatest tuner. And a lot of noise. But the stronger stations, it comes in really good. So, yeah, the tuner is working good now. The AM is working fine. Tested all the other functions. Everything's good. The controls are clean. Switches are clean. Everything's 100%. So we are now ready to uh, give this one back to the owner. And uh, hope he enjoys it. I'm sure he will. So, that's it for this one. Take care, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.